talking about collimators and specifically how collimators work, the main purpose of a collimator in X-ray imaging. And this is Cali the collimator we have here as our little display model we built this morning out of an REI box just to show you the purpose of a collimator, how it works. And then we're also going to talk about the secondary effect of X-ray scatter on the beam collimation and talk about why you always want to collimate down to the minimum amount such that you can see all of the anatomy of interest. I'm Brian Nett from HowRadiologyWorks.com. We have bite-sized content here in the radiology field. Favorite truck here? Is it the fire chief? The dump truck? The fire chief. The fire chief. Do you wish it had batteries though? No, no. What's a YouTube Ninja doing here? Oh, the limited edition heart healthy version of the YouTube play button? Thank you, YouTube Ninja. Again, YouTube has spared no expense. Again, this is our 200 subscriber special. We really appreciate you, all 200 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, click down below on subscribe and then click on that little bell icon so you can get notified when we have new content. Cali the collimator in action. We're collimating down a light field from a flashlight here, but the same principle is working on an x-ray system where we're collimating down the x-ray field coming from the x-ray tube. Additionally, on an x-ray system, there is a light that comes in from the side and then a mirror projects that light down onto the patient. And that way you can use the light field in order to determine where your x-ray field is going to irradiate the patient. This is nice for being able to do the positioning and it's made possible by the fact that the x-rays can pass through the mirror when the x-rays are being used. So that's the general idea of why you want a collimator on your x-ray system. And the fact that we're showing a collimator in one dimension here, the collimators on actual x-ray systems will allow you to collimate down in both directions. That one of the physical effects that will change the amount of x-ray scatter in the image is the collimation or the, the field which is being irradiated. So if you think about our reference case where we have this amount of x-rays coming in, so here's the collimation shown here in yellow. You have this amount of x-rays coming in, then you, you'll have both primary photons that make it to the detector and also scattered photons where the primary photon comes in and then is scattered shown here in red. And then the question is what will happen if we make this collimation wider. So if we irradiate more of the patient at one time with the x-ray beam. And the answer is even in the region, even in this smaller region here on the detector, even in that region, we will have more scatter. So here's some primary photons that you can see going through in a similar manner. But then there's going to be additional opportunities to have scatter because now there's additional anatomy which is being irradiated, which wasn't being irradiated before. And that can provide scatter even into the region that we looked at originally in this reference collimation. So in general, when you just need to see a certain part of the anatomy, it always is beneficial to hone in and to collimate down such that we irradiate the minimum region in order to see all the anatomy of interest for that clinical task. So just we want to remember as a high level takeaway, more narrow collimation, smaller region irradiated will reduce the scatter. And when we have to go to wider collimation, this leads to an increase of scatter. And head on over to howradiologyworks.com backslash scatter and download your free one-page PDF cheat sheet about the directionality for scatter with all the given technical parameters that we're going through in these videos.